We finally got them, the brand new M4 Mac Minis. Let's talk about them. Got myself a Mac Mini so sleek and smooth. In the heart of my workspace, it makes it smooth. Welcome back to the channel. So it's not every single day that Apple delivers the perfect product, right? The very, very perfect product with all the features you wanted. I think we have this with the M4 Mac Mini. There's one little tiny thing missing, which we'll get into, but I think it's about that close. Now, if you're thinking about buying a Mac in the next six months, let's say, this one has to be high on your list to actually consider it because of all the features it provides at the cost and the price points. Now, this actually is going to be coming out, like I said, with the M4 chip and the M4 Pro chip. And there are some key differences between the two, which we'll get into in the video. It's not really apparent just by looking at them, but there are some pretty major differences depending on what you want to do. So stay tuned for that in the video. But without further ado, let's get into one of the best products of the year, the M4 Mac Mini. All right, let's just start by the design of this thing. I think it's designed perfectly. It's actually gonna be five by five inches, about like this, all right? Take a look at my screen over here. Five by five inches, it says 1 20th the size of, of a basically a Windows computer, not the older one. It says it's about half the size of the older Mac Mini. It says, looks small, lives large, pretty crazy. They're saying it's about two inches thick as well. And actually, let me actually go to the dimensions page over here. So here we go, two inches right here. You can see five centimeters in height five by five, the weight is 1.5 pounds, and then the M4 Pro is 1.6 pounds. Maybe it has a little bit more copper in it to cool it, but you can see the dimensions right here. Perfect, right? What else do we want here? I mean, it's gonna be the perfect size for a small desk setup or something like that. And I'll show you some pictures. I mean, take a look at this thing on these desks in the work environment. It's tiny, right? I mean, you pair this with a studio display, which we'll get into, and it's gonna be the perfect setup for most people. I mean, I'm one of those people that always wanted the 27 or 32 inch, you know, I'm looking at that. I wanted to get the uh, iMac coming back, right? But I realistically, you gotta consider this with the studio display or another monitor. I think this is gonna be an incredible setup when they start shipping out. All right, now the front of this thing, and I'm gonna show you some stuff here, and then I'm gonna get into more of the specific specs on this. But you can see right here, so the, it has two USB-C on the front of all, both the M4 and the M4 Pro. So either model you get is gonna have two USB-C 10 gigabit per second ports on the front. You get a headphone jack, and they get a little button or a little like a light right here. So that's kind of cool. If you keep scrolling down here, now on the back is where things kind of break apart. So you'll see here, it says HDMI, HDMI Ethernet 3 times Thunderbolt. So we have the power cable here. Now actually, the cool thing here is there's no power brick. It's all internal. Um, when you look at the cord, you don't see a power brick on it. And I'll show you a picture of that. That's pretty crazy. So this thing's tiny, and it actually has that power supply in it. You get Ethernet here. It's going to depend on what you want, either a gigabit or 10 gigabit, depending on the model you choose. So obviously, there's some upgrade, you know, upgradability there, but I think only with the Pro. But we'll get into that in a second. You got the HDMI port here, but then you get three Thunderbolt ports. Now, depending on the, the M4 or the M4 Pro chip, though, these are completely different. We'll get into that in a second, but I wanted to show you that. Um, I kind of look at this. So they actually built this. Take a look at this little diagram. They have a fan on the bottom of it. The airflow kind of moves out of the bottom and out, and it kind of flows through the whole system here. So what they're basically saying is this is designed to handle the heat of the M4 and the M4 Pro. It kind of looks like a mini, you know, studio, uh, Mac Studio, right? I mean, that's what it reminds me of, obviously, with one glaring you know problem here we'll get into that in a second but overall i think the design is close to perfect here well let's just get into it now the one thing that it actually is missing right is if it just had that little sd card slot on the front of it i think it would be perfect right what do you think i mean everything else i mean the design is perfect besides that give me an sd card even a mini one somewhere it's perfect but i think that means that the mac studio is not going away and they want to keep something different there for that so overall that little thing it's missing, but besides that, it's perfect. All right, let's talk about the connections now. What are the differences between the M4 version and the M4 Pro version? Take a look at this diagram here. So here's the front again. We got two USB-C, and then here's the 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone jack. But down here, you can see, you know, it's gonna, it's basically gonna say on the M4 version right here, what you get is this. You get um, Thunderbolt 4 up to 40 gigabit per second, USB 4. So that's what this is. These are Thunderbolt 4 ports here on the, the lower version, or not the lower version, but the M4 version. But if you go with the M4 Pro, 
these ports over here, they actually go up to Thunderbolt 5. So the big difference here is this is 40 gigabit per second, Thunderbolt 4, but on this version, this is Thunderbolt 5 at 120 gigabits per second. You can see it right here, right in there, and it's comp backwards compatible to USB 4 at 40 gigabits per second. So that's the major difference there. Can you imagine this? So, I mean, everyone wants Thunderbolt 4 with their enclosures. I have enclosures sitting all over here in my desk and stuff. I have a bunch of Thunderbolt 4 enclosures. Now we can get up to 120 gigabit per second on Thunderbolt 5. That's gonna make external storage that much faster. Pretty incredible that Apple did this. I didn't expect that at all. I was expecting Thunderbolt 4 on both, but who knows? I mean, what, what do you guys think? Is this a huge, I think it's pretty big, right? I mean, all the things you can add to this at 120 gigabits per second, it's incredible. I think that's one of the biggest changes and something nobody expected. As far as the other things here, Wi-Fi is gonna be Wi-Fi 6E. I guess that didn't really change. Bluetooth is Bluetooth 5.3. And again, Ethernet is gonna be basically up to 1,000 gigabit uh, Ethernet, you know, obviously, or it can be configured to 10 gigabit Ethernet. And you have to actually, it's, it's kind of an increase in price there, which we'll get into in a second. But you do get the option there if you want it. Now for the display support, you guys can go ahead and pause this one I'm gonna show you here. But basically it's a little bit different between the M4 version and the M4 Pro version. And uh, let's take a look over here, but you can pause this and just, you know, I'll just kind of give you the nutshell of it, all right? So basically, they're, all of them are able to get up to three displays, three external displays, the M4 version and the M4 Pro version. But if you go at three displays, it's roughly up to 60 hertz, all right? So you can only get up to 60 hertz. But if you go at two displays, there's some differences between these two, again, pause it. But if you go with up to two displays, then you're able to get up to 240 40 hertz on both of these systems as well. So that's actually nice. If you have a, a faster hertz screen that you want to go over 60 hertz, this is going to be a good option for you. But then you only get the two displays. If you go with three displays externally, then you only get up to 60 hertz on all of them. So for all it's worth, there's some little differences in there between the two as well. But overall, in a nutshell, that's what it is. Another key difference between the two models, and we'll get into the pricing in a second here. Well, actually, here's some of the pricing, but we'll get into some of the configuration stuff here. But overall, here's the price here. So here's the base level, and the beauty of this is the price didn't change. It's still 599 bucks. They didn't raise the price in us, which is incredible. That's gonna be the base model. But what I wanna try to get here before I go to the next page, and you can see the pricing in here, but we'll get into that here in a second. But the one thing that you wanna get out of this page here is on the M4 models over here, the bandwidth, memory bandwidth is 120 gigabytes per second. But over here on the M3, the M4 Pro, it goes up to 273 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. So it's over double, over double the memory bandwidth of just the standard M4 chip. That's gonna make a huge difference with things like video editing and a whole bunch of more complex tasks and stuff. So I think, you know, obviously this is kind of separating the two a little bit more, but I don't know. I mean, obviously the M4 is gonna be fast enough for most people, but that's just a key thing to keep in mind that that's like one of the key differences I think most people won't realize. All right, now we're gonna talk about pricing and the configurations, but before we do that, let's just get into the chips really quickly. So here's the M4 chip, you can see the M4, all of the M4 models are gonna come with 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, so it's not gonna be a bin chip at eight cores, it's all gonna be 10 and 10, 16 core neural engine, up to 32 gigs of RAM on all of these M4 models. Um, they start at 16 and you're getting rid of that eight, obviously, they start at 16 for the same cost. 120 gigabytes of memory bandwidth, like I said, supports up to two 6K and one 5K display, all right? So that's the M4 chip. And uh, now if we go down here to the M4 Pro chip, let's just get in here. Here it is right here. So what we get is we get now a 14 core CPU and these things can be edited. I'm gonna show you this in a second. We're up to 14 core and then up to 20 core GPU. So it's quite a bit. It could be double the GPU cores on the Pro model. And that's quite substantial, obviously. Um, 16 core neural engine, up to 64 gigs of RAM versus up to 32 on the M4. 273 gigabytes of memory bandwidth like we just talked about. Support up to three 6K displays. So that's a little bit of a difference there. We just talked about that. So overall, this is pretty incredible. Now here are some of the configurations on my screen right here. And we're gonna scroll down. You can see that the M4 Pro chip is down here. Here's the M4 models up here. So these are essentially all the same. You can see the pricing starts at 599, incredible. These just have different RAM or different hard drive space here and different RAM. So we're just gonna click on the base one here. Now what you can do on the base M4 here is you can go ahead and here you can see you can add RAM. You can go from 16 to 24 for an extra 200 bucks, all the way up to 32, 32 gigabytes on you know the base, essentially base metal of the M4. It's not the base anymore but the mac mini that's pretty crazy as far as storage down here you can see it's, they're going to charge you 200 bucks for each tier here up to two terabytes you can only go up to two terabytes on the m4 
You can go up, I believe, eight terabytes on the Pro version as well. We'll get into that in a second. You can actually add 10 gigabit Ethernet as well, but there's not much other options in here. So that's all you know. You really get in here. And like I just mentioned, this is a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU. Um, so that's going to be very similar. But if you go down to the actual uh, Pro version down here, there's going to be a lot more features that you can add here. So take a look in here. So what this comes with, you know, it comes with the 12 core CPU, to just the, the base model, 16 core GPU. And you see it highlighted right here. But you can actually click on this for an extra 200 bucks. You can increase, you know, two more cores in the CPU, and then basically, what is that? Four more cores in the GPU, which might be worth it for an extra 200 bucks there. Same thing down here, except you can go up a little bit higher. Now you can go from a 24 up to 48 for 400 bucks, and then go up to 64 for an extra 600 dollars. So it's going to get a little pricey if you do that, but still, I think that's a good option for people that are power users. And the same thing down here, you can go all the way up to eight, eight terabytes instead of the, the two terabytes on just the normal version. That's a big difference. I mean, I think people are going to be using external storage, especially with those fast Thunderbolt connections. But, um, you know, especially at that uh, 120 gigabytes per second Thunderbolt 5. But still, if you need it, it's in here. I would never pay these prices, though. That's kind of crazy there. I wouldn't even think about that. Same thing down here. Gigabit is 100 bucks for Ethernet. And that's it. So you can see here, these are the main differences here. Pretty crazy, right? What do you guys think about this? I mean, at the other end, let's just talk about this a little bit because I'm actually really excited for the first time in a long time and Apple delivered just about everything except that SD card. Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up, but what do you think about this configuration? I think it's close to perfect. Again, the SD card's missing and you have to buy a monitor, but look over here. So if you actually take on Amazon right now, this is actually uh, the studio display right now at 1344. So that's less than 1400 bucks. And then you go in and you add, let's just say, let's just go back into your, you know, we'll, we'll go back to the, the, the very base model over here. So we add this one right here for 599. And uh, what does that come out to? That's 600 bucks, less than 1400 bucks. We're talking less than $2,000 for an M4, 16 gigs of RAM with the studio display. I mean, my Mac, you know, iMac, obviously, I'm waiting for the 27 or 32 inch iMac, but you know, realistically, this is maybe a better value. And if something breaks one of the components, you're not out the whole system, right? So I, I see where Apple's going with it. I think that's a great, you know, thing. I mean, especially with the studio display, you can, sometimes you can get this for like 1249, and then you can even upgrade the Mac mini and still stay under 2K. And it's just an incredible system for the cost. I mean, look at the size of this thing. You know, it has all the ports we want. It has just about everything. I don't think there's too many misses here, but in the comments, you guys tell me what you were expecting, you know, as far as size and stuff. Also the ports, that it hit the ports perfectly? Obviously everyone's gonna say we want the SD card reader, even if it's like a micro or a mini one, I guess. I mean, anything would help here, but at the end of the day, it's missing, right? And they wanna keep that different than the studio. And obviously this thing is going to be great for Apple intelligence. They have a whole bunch of advertising on this if that's what they're pushing. They're also saying it's one of the best, you know, Macs ever for gaming now. Um, I mean, obviously when you go with more, you know, more GPU cores, it's going to make a big difference. So when the Max chip comes out and the Ultra chip, it's going to be a lot better. But for what we have now, this is going to be one of the best with the 20 GPU cores if you get that model. So overall, I think this is a huge win for Apple. So anyways, I don't want to seem like a too much of an Apple, you know, fan or anything like that. I call them out all the time on this channel. If you watch my channel, I'm probably one of the more negative people against them. I love their products. I'm just, you know, that's just the way I am though. I like, like to call them out. 256 gigs is a, you know, that's the biggest, I guess that's the biggest miss, right? Not even the SD card reader. Should be 512 to begin with, but overall we can't complain. So at the end of the day, 599, they didn't change the price on us. Thank you, Apple. And we'll talk to you maybe tomorrow. There's another thing coming out. Peace.